Edmonton's chief of police admits that officers made things worse trying to break through a picket line. And in sports, Grant Fuhr registers his 10th career shutout. Good evening. People who farm for a living might generally be considered easygoing, but not these days. Alberta farmers are furious, and they're letting people know about it. On Saturday, there was a huge rally at Staveley in southern Alberta. More than 2,000 farmers were there. Today, near the Canada-U.S. border, farmers blocked the highway, demanding government help to get through the crisis they're facing. Russell Outred has that story. There was almost no notice, but farmers came with their tractors as soon as they heard there was going to be a protest. Farmers are in a crunch that we've never seen before, and, uh, and we're up against a wall, and there's only one place to go, you gotta fight back. 150 farmers, tractors, grain trucks, forming up a convoy to take their protest on the road. A protest against the lowest grain prices in 20 years, a desperate plea for government help. These guys, their backs are against the wall. They don't do this. They're not militant people. These are hardworking farmers that just want a fair deal. That's all they want. I ask you, members of the government, go back and do something. Don't say you can't. You're in power. You can do it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. There have been other farm rallies in Alberta, but none bigger than this one. 2,000 farmers came to the rally in Staveley. Some had already lost their farms. John and I stopped by our farm today before we came to this rally. We walked through the house. It's, I can't believe that somebody would do this. It's just sitting empty. What's going to happen to all these families in Alberta? We didn't deserve this. The province of Alberta has never seen farm rallies and protests of this sort before. These farmers say they're planning more of the same. Farm groups have asked for a policy that will sustain the family farm. They've also asked for more than a billion dollars in immediate cash assistance. And more and more, that message is being driven home by ordinary farmers. Russell Edgard, CBC News, on Highway 4 near the Canada-U.S. border. A 44-year-old Loomis employee is dead following an industrial accident this afternoon in South Edmonton. Police say the man got out of a Loomis van to help direct the driver as he backed up to a delivery door. The van suddenly lurched backwards and the victim was pinned against the building. He died in hospital about 90 minutes later. Police have not released his name. The House of Commons Justice Committee is getting ready to write its final report on the escape of Daniel Gingra. Gingra is the convicted killer who got away from a prison guard in Edmonton four years ago. He killed two more people before he was finally recaptured. Corrections officials say they have made changes, changes that should prevent it from happening again, but one member of the Justice Committee isn't taking their word for it. He visited the Edmonton prison today to see the changes for himself. Linda Steele has that story. As a member of the Commons Justice Committee, Liberal MP Derek Lee has spent the better part of two years looking into the escape of convicted killer Danielle Gingra, and he still has many questions. Do I really believe that all of the changes to the system that they say they've made have in fact been made. Corrections officials have come under fire for allowing the release of this man, 40-year-old Daniel Gingra. The convicted killer was serving time at the Edmonton Institution in 1987 when he was granted a one-day pass to celebrate his birthday at West Edmonton Mall. Once there, Gingra overpowered his unarmed guard and escaped. Two people would die before he was recaptured. Rodeo clown Vitel Piquet shot execution style in the back of the head, and medicine hat seamstress Wanda Woodward strangled with her own shoelaces. Who did what and why? The young woman's parents have been demanding some answers, and so is the Commons Justice Committee looking into the escape. Liberal MP Derek Lee and his colleagues had to fight for access to the uncensored version of a government report dealing with the Gingra affair. It took them nearly two years to get it. Uh, my feeling is that uh, corrections uh, probably didn't uh, respond appropriately uh, from a management administrative perspective at the time. That's my gut feeling. Corrections officials say they have a new security system now to help prevent future escapes, and they showed that system off to the Liberal MP today. But even Derek Lee admits no system is risk-free. Uh, I'd love to come out of here today, and our committee would love to wrap up its report and say, hey, don't anybody worry now, everything's A-OK. -okay. But I, uh, we know that we can't because 
because you're dealing with human beings. The Justice Committee will begin drafting its final report on the Jingra escape tomorrow. It will be presented to Parliament in about two weeks' time. Linda Steele, CBC News, Edmonton. Police in both Calgary and Edmonton are investigating suspected murders tonight after two bodies were found during the weekend. The RCMP spent the day searching the woods just west of Calgary for clues after finding the badly decomposed body of a young woman. She has not been identified. Police aren't sure how she died, but they suspect she was murdered. And police found the body of Giuseppe Joseph Chiarello of Edmonton just west of the capital this weekend. Police think he was also a murder victim. Edmonton's chief of police has admitted that officers made a big mistake last week when they tried to break through picket lines during the public service workers' strike. Pickets had blocked the entrances at Canada Place, the main government building downtown. Police were called. The result was chaos. Today, Chief Doug McNally said the incident was handled badly. We have a mandate to maintain the peace. And uh, when we uh, attempted to open the lines uh, to allow people in, uh, we perhaps lost sight of that mandate that indeed in doing that uh, we created more of a problem in a broader sense uh, than we would have uh, if we had chosen some other means of handling the problem. At one point last week an officer used an irritating spray called capstun to subdue the strikers. McNally said its use was justified. Well if you live outside of Edmonton or Calgary, or outside of Edmonton at least, get ready to pay more for telephone service Alberta Government Telephones has applied to the Canadian Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission for a rate increase. AGT is asking for a boost in the single line residential service rate of between $1.34 and $2.36 per month. Commercial line rates would increase between $6 and $15 a month. The company spokesman says AGT is trying to bring the rates closer to the cost of providing the service. Local service is subsidized by long distance revenue at the current time. Well, current conditions. Calgary is clear tonight. North wind at 6. The relative humidity is 65% and the barometric pressure is reading 101.3 kilopascals and rising slowly. In Edmonton, a few clouds and 8 degrees tonight. Southwest wind at 7. The relative humidity 27% and the barometer is reading 101.2 kilopascals and the pressure is still rising tonight. The high pressure area is blanketing most of the province and the forecasts show it. In uh, the southern parts of the province, Calgary and Medicine Hat can expect sunny skies and pretty warm temperatures tomorrow. The mountain parks, nice and warm and sunny as well. High of 15 in Jasper. In the central regions, highs of 14 expected in both Edmonton and Red Deer with sunny skies tomorrow. In the northeastern sections, Wood Buffalo and Fort McMurray, pretty nice for the northern regions. Sunny skies tomorrow and fairly warm. And the northwest, high level and Grand Prairie, warm. Not quite as sunny, but still quite a lot of sunny periods. So the five-day outlooks now for the major cities. Calgary, it'll be clear tonight. Minus one is the expected low overnight. And tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday, sunny skies and warm temperatures, especially Wednesday. Boy, that's a high temperature for this time of the year. Friday, oh, some cloud will move in, but still pretty warm. The Edmonton region, tonight, mostly clear. And Tuesday should be sunny, but uh, partly cloudy skies forecast for Wednesday. Temperatures will remain high through the week. Friday, some rain may be in the offing. Well, time to turn to sports, and was it an active night? Mondays aren't usually. Not usually, but it was steady tonight. The NHL seems to spread out its schedule this year more so than in other years. Couple of games on the schedule tonight in sports. Former Oiler uh, goaltender Grant Fuhrer excels in Toronto. The Buffalo Bills get a wake-up call from the Kansas City Chiefs, and... A rocket on wheels, some spectacular pictures from a flying Mercedes when we return. Easy, effective floor cleaning, that's the Atlantic B-Mop. With its lever-controlled ringer, your hands never touch the water. Its soft sponge always cleans perfectly. Introducing the new Roto Shaggy Mop. Its 360-degree swivel head works at any angle, and its special bristles leave nothing behind. Its flexible handle reaches under furniture without you breaking your back. It's light as a feather, and the removable head is machine washable. The Roto Shaggy with straight or flexible handle and the B-Family, what cleaning was meant to be. 
I feel like I am making some small contribution to the big breakthroughs that are occurring in this field. Helen Bowman is one of the many researchers funded in part by the makers of brand name prescription medicine. Neuroscientists are making vital breakthroughs in pain research and in Alzheimer's research and in spinal paralysis. The brand name pharmaceutical companies are a leading funder of all medical research in Canada. This is important because it ensures that Canadian scientists remain key players in the global search for new cures. Canada's brand name pharmaceutical companies bringing research to life. Take the Olive Garden Pasta Tour of Italy this fall. An exciting journey through delicious new pasta dishes from all over Italy. Visit Florence and enjoy tempting pasta Florentine. See Venice and the light and luscious shrimp Veronese. And in Palermo, take in delectable chicken and sausage pepperonata. Make your plans now for the Olive Garden Pasta Tour of Italy. But move fast, a tour this affordable won't last forever. There are those events you can prepare for, ah. and those you can't. It's then that you should give Canada's first choice in auto glass, Speedy, a ring. From chip repair to total glass replacement, our professionals can handle your problem from start to finish and have you back behind the wheel before you know it. So when you have to think fast, think Speedy, auto glass. New York Rangers revealed their new team captain tonight in their first home game of the season. That man, Marc Messier, received a thunderous ovation when he took to the ice in the pregame ceremony. And when the game got underway, Messier showed he deserved that honor. He is being called the franchise in Madison Square Garden. And tonight on the Boston Power Play here, Rosicka, the former oiler, centers out in front. It goes off the skate of Carpenter and in. Bruins celebrate the goal. Referees say it's no goal, and it was scoreless in the third period where Messier feeds to Ogradnik, and Ogradnik makes it 1 0 Rangers at 2.43. Former Edmonton owner Adam Graves with a steal, but Del Guidis came up with a big save. He made 38 of them on the night, but he couldn't stop this one in overtime. Messier to Gartner in front at the 31 second mark. That's the game winner. 2 to 1 for the Rangers in overtime. Get this. Since Marc Messier's arrival, the Rangers have won two 2-1 two to one games, and Messier has assisted on three of the four goals they've scored this season. Just how valuable is Grant Fuhr to the Toronto Maple Leafs? Consider this. It took the Leafs 13 games to pick up two victories last year. Tonight, Grant Fuhr was unbeatable as the Leafs picked up their second win of the new season in their third game. That's right, Grand Fuhr, unbelievable tonight, stopping Brett Hall. Just ask Hall how tough it was to beat Grand Fuhr. He was robbed twice by Fuhr, both from close in. Wendell Clark off to a great start for the Toronto Maple Leafs. He almost gets his sixth goal in three games here, but Zezel follows up and puts it in 1 0 Toronto. Dave Allett makes it 2 0 Leafs, walking right in and firing from the left circle. Leafs in control, and Claude Loisel gets the empty netter. It's not pretty, but that puck does get across the goal line. Loisel and the Leafs, 3-0 final score tonight at Maple Leaf Gardens. And the Leafs, are you sitting down? The Leafs are in first place. Grant Fuhr's 10th career shutout. Wendell Clark, though, some bad news tonight. Wendell Clark suffered torn knee ligaments in tonight's game. He's out indefinitely, but the doctors say it's not serious. It's only a partial tear. No surgery needed. Buffalo Bills put their undefeated record on the line in Kansas City tonight. In their first five games, the Bills have resembled the team that almost won the Super Bowl last January. But tonight, the Chiefs made the Bills look ordinary. We pick this one up in the second quarter. 3-0 Chiefs. DeBerg on the play action. Passes to Pete Holohan. It's 10-0 Kansas City. That's all they needed. Bills coach Marv Levy having a tough night, taking his frustrations out on the officials. Take a valium, Marv. On to the third quarter. His Bills are trailing 16-6. Thurman Thomas fumbles the ball. It's recovered by Kevin Ross of the Chiefs in the Bills' 18-yard line, and that leads to their second touchdown of the game. Christian Okoya, the Nigerian nightmare. Unstoppable, 23-6 at that point. It's too tough for the Bills tonight. Basically a no-win situation in Kansas City. And Bills quarterback Jim Kelly was picking himself off the turf 
all night. Here again, he is stripped of the ball, and yet it leads to another touchdown by the Kansas City Chiefs. They simply ran away with this one in the third quarter, and here in the fourth, it's Okoya again. That made it 30-6. to Final score, Kansas City in a big upset tonight, 